guess, if you didn't watch the last video. Uh, the roads aren't too bad from last night's storm, but they're a little damp, and these roads are really cool. Um, so I don't know where I'm going to end up tonight. I really don't have much plan other than to kind of stay on these back roads. I found a couple of scenic overlooks I'd like to check out. And then there's a park that I'd like to check out, but I don't know if we can actually camp there tonight. So we'll have to see how that turns out. But these roads out here are amazing. Oh, okay. look at that. Look at those like cliff wall things. We're just down in the middle of this dirt road here. Okay guys, I got the camera pointed forward and you're not going to believe what happened, but I had just turned around and uh, uh, a park officer or a, like a, an officer pulled up and he knew who I was. So he's taking me up to the overlook and we're going to check that out. So there's this truck way up in front of me. All right, guys, so we pulled over and uh, I'm here with Gary. He's an Iowa State Conservation Officer and he's been following along on the videos and he wanted to take a look at the setup. So I showed him that and he brought me out here to the Overlook. So we're going to take a look at that. But is there anything you'd like to tell anybody about Iowa? Well, first I thought you were turkey hunting. That's oh. why I stopped. And then I realized it was you from the video. So that's awesome. That's a pretty good setup to, to be out here in. Yeah, this is the Lus Hills State Forest in uh, western Iowa, and it's all pretty much uh, public hunting and public hiking, and you can also camp here 
free of charge as well. So, we so we're going to take a look at the Overlook and yeah, check it out. It's, it's awesome to meet somebody out here, uh, especially that knows the history of the area. Yeah, this, uh, this Overlook uh, was built. I've been here for 21 years or so since, since uh, 22 years, since 2000. And uh, it was here when I got here. But it was built by the state forest guys and uh, the Boy Scouts. I think it was part of an Eagle Scout project. And uh, this is uh, this is a kind of a little remembrance monument spot for Walter Ordway. He was uh, uh, very active in the area and making this, helping to make this a national scenic byway. This whole area of the Los Hills. So is this privately owned prior to that then? A lot of it was private farms that uh, chunk by chunk they ended up selling off to uh, the state of Iowa for public for public use. That's awesome. Yeah. The spot. Yeah this is really neat. And they do uh, the forest guys have been trying to clear out some of the some of the cedar areas that the cedars really end up kind of taking over so they've been kind of trying to clear some of them out and then make it uh, make it native prairie again for part of it obviously there's a lot of hardwood timber and bur oak and stuff which is good for deer and turkey hunting but some of it they're trying to get it evened out where some of it goes back to natural natural prairie which is what all this used to be was natural prairie there wasn't many trees here back in the pioneer days oh no and then you know, the wagons come across and they end up bringing seeds with them and dropping seeds from their wagons and ended up just uh having a lot of timber here but it mm. used to all be prairie back in the 1800s most of it and there's a trail that goes along this whole ridge so you can just wander around out here yep you don't need a permit unless you're unless you're turkey hunting or, or deer hunting. Uh, if people are out now, between now and May 15th, it is turkey season. So you probably don't want to wear anything that's blue or red or blue or red bandanas because that kind of looks like a gobbler's head. But oh, okay. Just wear bright clothing. And you can see, you can see it's been burned. A lot of our state forest employees they uh they do controlled burns through here uh to kind of keep the weeds down and keep the dogwood brush from coming up keep it native prairie mm -hmm. oh it's a beautiful view but this is about four square miles this whole state forest is and it goes down into uh goes down into Harrison County. We're in Monona right now, but it goes down towards Pisgah and Harrison County. And we can see a couple turkeys. Oh yeah, right on the tree. Way out there on the ridge hey. there, there's a couple turkeys there. Do you guys see that? You can see them, a little blurry. Got some gobblers out there. Yeah, it's pretty country. It doesn't look like Iowa. It's no, it doesn't. It is. You know, uh, and that's, I, I kind of say the same thing about like the Ponca area of Nebraska. If you've ever driven around up there, you get, you know, hills and stuff like this. And it's just entirely different from the flat plains that 90% of the people think that state's actually going to be. So it is, yeah. It's cool to see this area and this view, guys. It's pretty unique. That's Nebraska off in the distance that way. It's the less hills, they just stop and then it gets flat and then it... Then it goes down uh, to the Missouri River and then your Nebraska Hills mm -hmm. on the other side. Just a beautiful view out here, y'all. You can see for miles, even off that direction, way over that hill, all the way out there. Well, it's a beautiful view, guys. Uh, and thanks for showing this to me. I had turned around because I thought I had passed it and, and Maybe it just wasn't what I was looking for, and he he pulled up on me as I was uh, sideways, sideways in the, the road. road and got out of his truck. So I thought I better stop, and then 
look where we are now. You never yeah. know what's going to happen. Yeah, he was doing about an 18 point uh, Austin Powers turn, it looked like, <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the road. Yeah. Well, my front tires rub a little bit. I need to lift or do some trimming. I um, hear you. I've got some rub. Yeah, yeah, if you want to show me some other spots, Ben, that'd be sure. awesome. Sure, yeah, I'll take you around and I'll show you some uh, non-fee camping areas that you could camp in. Just be aware it is turkey season. Yeah, so. well, I'm not going to go wandering through the woods. It's a little chilly today. Anyways. Yeah, if you do go hiking, just wear something bright that's orange or white or something like that. Just avoid the reds, which looks like a gobbler's head when, when turkeys are... So my red uh, in the flannel today is not going to be a good idea? Probably not. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna get back on the road, guys. So this is the, it's like firebox.com, but it's got all kinds of different uh, things you can use. That metal cup that I had, it's like a GSI, that'll slip down in here okay. to hold it if, you, if it was windy and you didn't want it sitting on top. This is what you put on top to cook like steaks and stuff.
So then these, these are kind of your, your stakes that hold your pot and stuff, depending on where you put them. But it's pretty windproof. And then you just open it up, and this is the tray that holds the ash. That just pops off. Then you open it up, and the oh, bottom fold just folds right out. The bottom just folds down. Now it's it's not perfectly square, so when you put the ashtray in, oh, one is wider. One side. Yeah. So when you put it in. Well, it's nice that it keeps the ashes off the ground. It does. Well, and I have a little portable table I put on a picnic table mm -hmm. to put my other stove or this one on. You can put that right on top of the metal table because I don't worry about getting in. It's just... But then, uh, so you put these across. You can put them. There's all these different little holes you can put to hold a cup or whatever. Mm -hmm. You put charcoal in there or sterno or I just been using wood. Yeah, you can and then if you need twigs to, be. Yeah. If just little twigs mm -hmm. you like that on the mm -hmm. ground there, you just keep feeding it and this goes you can feed it in through here or down here, whichever, but this is kind of a windbreak. And then this is how I cook my steaks. These little things fit. Oh right, the tabs lock. Right. It just slips in there. I like how it it's folds up I, to such a compact package. It is there. I mean, you could. So once you get these in, it's good. Even. Yeah, it's pretty slick. They're like eighty or a hundred bucks through Firebox. That's not bad. No. But you know, if you just had like maybe six pieces of charcoal, mm -hmm. you'd be able to cook a steak on mm -hmm. it. So it doesn't use much fuel. I just, I like a wood fire for cooking stuff. Tastes better than propane, that's for sure. Yeah, it does. And that, that just clips. And that's just a collapsible blowtorch that you can put in some of the holes of that. Oh, and blow into it? Right. Yeah, to yeah I've got one of those with me to you. It's pretty slow. At first I thought it was one of those uh, push, you push down on it to get the spark or whatever. Have you seen those? It's like a fire starter and it's really it kind of works off pressure like almost like a little center punch deal. No kidding. But it's you just push it and it gives you a spark at the end of it. Huh. I've never had I've never played with one personally, but I know they exist. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Yeah it is. But then we got out to Montana and half the forest that we went through it had fire bands. Oh yeah. So we're using our white jet or our jet boil. Well, I'm gonna take off. Good well, I luck. Appreciate it. You got my card if yep. you got any questions on any of the areas. So. Well, guys, you never know who you're gonna run into out here. Uh, it was awesome to hang out with Gary today and have him show me some spots. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where I am, but I think I'm gonna camp here tonight. And he showed me this spot, and I probably would have never found it without you. Well, good luck. You I had a good camper set up. It's pretty cool. Thank you. And I hope whatever build out you do goes well. I'll probably do something pretty similar once I get a topper. So. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Gary. Yep. Thanks. I appreciate good it. meeting you, crazy. I all right. appreciate Take it. Take care. You too. See ya. Well, all right, y'all. Gary took off. <laughs> that was so awesome. Uh, and the fact that as a conservation officer, he's a fan of the channel is really cool to me. Um, but I'm out here and I had planned to get some groceries and whatnot, but I'm not leaving the spot that he showed me. So I've got enough food that I can get by tonight. I still have a few beers in the cooler from last night. So I'll be good on all of that. Uh, and he gave me like a, an actual packet of maps and stuff like that to check out. But he also told me that if I walk down this little road where the gates open and it says foot traffic only, if I walk down there a little ways, there's an old abandoned house that he said it's been, it's fallen over. And then there's like some old uh, half filled wells. So I'm gonna get my shoes changed and we're gonna take a walk up this hill and see if we could find anything. I think it's 
I gave you a time check. I think it's almost three o'clock at this point. It's 3.30 and uh, it's about 45, 48 degrees, so it's not terrible. I'm good in a hoodie right now and I'll be good walking up there. So I need to get my shoes changed and we'll go for a little hike and see what we can find up here. So he said I need to go straight and not take this turn up here. And I mean, look at that view out there, y'all. And here I am. You can't really even see it from the road. And there's no markings or anything out there that would tell you this is like a public use area. You got to be one of those people that looks at the maps, looks at the areas that you can go to. And uh, in my case, you got to be one of those people that listens to the officer when he tells you, this is a great spot, man. Check it out. And here I am. And this is all just so you can see that it's farmland. He did explain a bunch of stuff to me off camera. We actually talked for a couple hours. And uh, so a lot of it is still farmed. But you can come back here and use the land so that the gates usually closed back there and he thought that maybe there was a farmer back here doing some work, which is why the gate was open. But there's a picnic table and a fire pit back here, but typically you cannot drive back here. You would have to walk back and set up a tent or something like that. Yeah, you can see it right there. I'm more curious about the house though. He said it's all fallen down, but I like that kind of old junk. So picnic table, dirty old fire pit, firewood. I may end up using a couple of those pieces. And it looks like the house was right here at some point. You can see some concrete there some rubble here oh yeah it like fell into the fell into the earth over here you've got some old uh, cinder blocks I can't tell what that metal stuff is there got more it's an old mailbox something's probably living inside of that yeah, just a bunch of metal junk. Trees going crazy. I don't know, maybe this was a house? Or this is just a pit. I'm gonna have to keep walking and looking. I don't know what that is. I don't know what this is either. Some more junk over there. That big old timber huge. Look at the size of those nails. Like an old coffee pot or something. Old teapot. It's heavy. Animal wheel. Doesn't look to be much else back here in the trees. There's like some fencing right there. More tires and stuff over here. Oh yeah, there was an old fence right there. More junk. Basically nothing left of anything. Bunch of old tires. Ooh, look at the skull. Did 
Check that out. There's another, oh, something died right here. You can see more bones right there. See that? And there's a couple more pieces out there. And some more down here. There's ribs. I don't know if you can see those ribs there. I'm not sure what kind of animal that was, but that's kind of neat. If it still had all of its nose, I'd take that back, put it in my garage, but we'll leave him here. Yeah, too bad that wasn't a full skull. That would have been cool to cool to have. More tires and junk like that. It's like a slick. I don't know what that would have been off of. And you can see there was a fence, like I'm standing on top of it. Fence that ran through here. A couple more tires. All right, let's hike back up, see if we can find ourselves that wellhead. So you can see that's the picnic table and stuff over there. My truck is back over that way. I found the old power pole for the property that was here when there was a house here. Oh, and maybe that's the, that's it right there. I think so. There's a big hole. Let's not fall in that, but yeah, there we go. Old power box. And then you've got, oh wow, yeah, let's not fall in there. It's hard to get a shot. Let me get around the other side. I don't know if this was, he thought it was a cistern. I don't know what that's about. Pump, maybe. There's an old bone right over there laying on the ground. He thought it had been filled in at some point. About halfway at least. Another old pole here attached to something. Is that an old light? I can't tell. So there used to be a, there was a farmstead right here. Farmhouse. Oh, what's that over there? I think I found something else. Gotta be something down there. Oh yeah. That I cannot see down inside of, but there's a big hole here. It looks like there's another one here. Yeah. Well, this one's had junk thrown in it, but it looks like it was pretty deep at one point. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You never know what you're gonna find. I walked right by him. The table and stuff is over there, so I walked right by it. I didn't even notice the power pole because the tree had grown up around it. But at some point in somebody's life, this was their front yard. Their house was there. Their well and cistern and whatever were over here. There was their power pole. This was their driveway. And they had this huge view. Oh, there's an old like cattle trough or something right there. Gotta go look at that. I wonder if this had water plumbed in coming in. I think so. Got some pieces of concrete here. Old oil filter. There just looks like a piece of glass over there. Well, 
it wouldn't have been a terrible childhood to grow up in this area and be able to run around out here. I bet there's neat stuff like this just kind of littered all through here. I find this neat anyways. I mean, it was sitting up on a platform. Look at that. Plastic? Yeah, it's plastic. What does it say? Tupperware. <laughs> Need some Tupperware? Eh. Some old tires over there. Something laying right there, an old piece of machinery or something. And it's still windy. It would have been really cool if there was like an old car, old rusty car out here or something. That would have been neat to see. Well, unless I spot something interesting, I think I'll see you guys back at the truck. Well, made it back to camp. This is one of the cooler spots I've been to in a while. Just because it's in the middle of nowhere. But let's grab ourselves a drink. And this one's gonna be rough. It's, it's late in the afternoon. It's about 4.30 now. So it's not quite five o'clock, but we don't really care around here. And I'm going to bring back some childhood memories. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say childhood. I'm gonna bring back memories of uh, a wasted youth here with some Mad Dog 2020. I don't know if this is uh, the same as the stuff that you used to get in the glass bottle, but this is tangy orange, and I always got the orange one uh, when we drank Mad Dogs. So, uh, yeah, and this is strong, 12% in here. It doesn't really say anything on it, but big bark, hard bite of flavor. Mad Dog 2020. MD 2020. Does it even say Mad Dog on here anywhere? I don't know if that's even that what it really actually is, but MD Mad Dog is what we always called it. That's the same stuff. That's the same stuff. This is going to be a slow sip for sure. But I think I'm going to grab my chair and just sit. Well, the sun's starting to go down. I mean, it's like seven o'clock. I'll have to look at my phone, but as you can see, I've got my coat and gloves on. Uh, I think it's in the 30s right now. And the low tonight is like 25, which I'm not incredibly prepared for with my lighter sleeping bag, but I have plenty of layers to make it work. 
But we're going to get ourselves a fire going. In the old Yuko flat pack grill and fire pit here. Got to grab some fire starters and some twigs and wood. All right, y'all. Well, we're in the rig. I have changed. I got my extra blanket out uh, because it is chilly, and I turned the heater on, obviously. And we're going to get ourselves some dinner going. So, we'll grab the jet boil here and our spoon. And I grabbed my pot and pan set out of the truck we're gonna make some chili mac because I've got this in the the food crate and we're gonna take that extra meat that we had from last night and toss it in there and have like triple double chili mac Let's see if I can find that Could make burritos again, I guess, but we'll just go with chili mac tonight, something different. That's gonna be some meaty chili mac. So part of the reason why I wanna try to actually do this is because I got this, and this is a burner attachment for your jet boil. Oop. So normally with this thing, your bottle mounts to here and it actually like locks in. There's a little locking tabs on there. Uh, and so you're not supposed to put a pan right on top of this because there's no airspace. But this thing, I don't know if this actually like locks into here or what. If it just is supposed to sit on top, I think it's supposed to sit like that maybe does that it's supposed to lock in there oh these turn out oh, okay I'm over here like what is going on all right <laughs> there we go I don't know what I'm doing this does actually lock on there all right there we go okay so you actually have to know what you're doing we're gonna use the lower the smaller thing just because I don't want it sitting up super high with the pan on top of there and now I should be able to take this pan oh hey I always forget there's a coffee cup I have a coffee cup for in the morning. I gotta leave that there. I'm gonna forget about it. 
But there we go. We've got our pan and we can set our pan right on the jet boil. It's just a little attachment and like you see it fits right inside of there so we're going to turn that down really low there we go Ooh. so this is chili mac beans macaroni pasta and meat it's going to be really thick with with everything on there and I don't know if all this meat that I have is actually going to fit in this pan along with this maybe I should have waited to turn that on not too shabby we're going super meaty this might end up on a tortilla anyways because it's going to be so thick we're using all that meat Like I'm gonna put this on a tortilla because everything's better on a tortilla. Man, I'm gonna end up putting everything on that I had last night. We're going in just like a burrito. Can't help myself at this point. I've got it all. Maybe minus the spicy chips tonight. But this is gonna make a great burrito. I don't have my cheese grater back here. That's in the back of the truck. What am I doing? Might as well use the ingredients we have with us, right? We have these ginormous extra grande shells here. And that's bubbling. I'm gonna turn that off. That looks really good with all the meats in there. It's, this is gonna be sloppy. But we'll, we'll lay down a bed of lettuce. And then we'll put some chili mac on there. Extra double meaty, triple double chili mac. Chili Mac Burrito. In with some peppers. This is like a repeat of my last one, except not murdered on a cast iron pan, right? I guess we're just going to slice some cheese off. Cheese. 
cheese, sour cream, and then we're going to use some red hot jalapeno hot sauce. Give it a little bit of spice. Oh, that was a lot. And try not to spill this thing. That is a monster burrito. <laughs> Chili Mac burrito. That's the stuff. Who needs chipotle when you got chili mac and extra grande tortilla shells? Oh. Wow. Well, I don't know if I said more than like 10 words through that, but I'm going to save the rest of this. Because with the extra fixings and the extra meat, that is plenty. I could have made four burritos with that. Oh, man. All right. I'm going to get this cleaned up. All right, y'all. Well, I've got everything cleaned up. And I'm actually just going to go to bed. I'm not going to really hang out in here. I stood outside for way too long tonight in the cold, but I enjoyed it. The view out here was amazing. Today has been a wild day. Well, never would have expected today to turn out like it did to meet Gary. Get this window closed. Where's the window? I'll stay warm enough. If I wake up, I'll crack that heater on. It says it's 68 degrees in here now. So I think I'll be all right. Oh, I'll see you guys in the morning. switch oh it's bright <sighs> I can't barely even see with that <sighs> well it's 6 17 in the morning it's probably hard to tell on camera but the sun is coming up I've been laying here awake for at least an hour now. I don't know why I can't fall back to sleep. Ugh. But I think I think I'm just gonna get up and get out of here. I gotta pack up my fire pit, my chair, that stuff sitting outside, and I imagine it's cold it says it's just above freezing in here 32 34 something like that it's temperature outside it's 26 degrees outside it feels like 13 oh we've got a high of 53 today yeah I think I'm just gonna throw my coat on leave my pajamas on and Maybe I'll put some pants on so I can, in case I want to stop somewhere. I've got, I don't know, hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive. 
home this morning. Oh. Yeah, why couldn't I fall back to sleep? Oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to get my junk round up, round it up, get my junk round up. I'm going to get my junk cleaned up. And hit the road, y'all. Alright. Ready to face the cold. Kinda. It's actually pretty light out there. That's a beautiful sunrise. The sun's not actually up yet. It's windy out here. All right, I gotta get this cleaned up and get that put away. Well, they're all on the road. So I'm trying something different today. And it's this little donut. And it's called a caffeinated, it's Boost Caffeinated Donuts. So it's got about the amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee would have. And I can't say I've ever had one before. So we'll give that a shot. And I grabbed my Dr. Pepper. I got, I had Dr. Pepper in the cooler instead of making coffee this morning. Cause I drank all my water that was in the back of the truck. So I would have had to come up and get some from the cab and I didn't really want to get out <laughs> to that. But I had a blast yesterday and meeting Gary and having him show me around to these spots, like never ever would have expected that to happen. And the fact that he watches the videos is just wild, you know? You never know who's a fan of what you're doing. Um, so it was great to hang out with him. And uh, the campsite that he showed me and the, the few other spots that he showed me, that was just cool. And he gave me, and I'm not gonna show you the label on the front of this either, but he gave me a big packet of information. So I had a blast, y'all. Couldn't have asked for a better night. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and close the video out here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off, I get lost. I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south, I'll be spreading out. Call it what